Hello, my name is Sadaf. I'm one of the junior doctors in this department. Today I will be performing the cardiovascular examination on Dr. Kamran. Hello, Dr. Kamran. Hello. How do you do? I'm good, thank you. Uh, today I will be performing uh, the cardiovascular examination on you. Mm -hmm. uh, for that, uh, the patient should be adequately exposed, that is, above the waist, that uh, he should not have his shirt on. Now, starting with the CVS examination, I will first look at the general signs of a cardiovascular disease. So, could I please look, have a look at your hands? The patient, the other hand as well. The patient has no paler on the palmer side, no erythema. Okay. And there is no clubbing, coilonychia, uh, no splinter hemorrhages, no Osler nodes, no Janeway lesions. Thank you very much. You can relax now. And the other hand, uh, the same examination on it as well. Now I'll be feeling for the pulse. The pulse is regular, good volume, and the rate is also normal. I'll be checki checking for the um, collapsing pulse now. Uh, do you have any pain in your shoulder? No. Okay, because I'll be raising your arm above your shoulder. Mm -hmm. There is no evidence of any collapsing pulse. I'll check for radio radio delay and also for radio femoral delay. There is no radio radial or radio femoral delay in my patient. Now I'll be going uh, towards the face. Uh, could you please look at the ceiling for me? There is no paler in the eyes. And could you look down towards your feet? No ictus or jaundice noticed. Could you stick your tongue out for me, please? There is no cyanosis seen in my patient. Thank you very much. Could you look towards your left side, please? The JVP is not raised in my patient. I'll be just pressing down gently on your tummy, okay? Do you, do you have any pain there? Okay. And the hepatojugular reflex. Just to see if the JVP raises with the pressure on the liver. Thank you very much. You can relax now. Moving on to the specific examination of the precordium, we'll first do the inspection from the foot end. The patient should ideally lay at 45 degree, degrees angle for this examination. So there is no precordial bulge, no uh, heave that I can see on the patient's chest, no discharge, no deformity, no redness, and um, no um, heave that I can see on inspection. So there is inspection from the foot end, inspection from the side. Moving on to um, the palpation of the precordium, I'll be touching my hand on your chest, okay? Uh, firstly, we feel for the apex beat, so you put your hand and feel the finger where you can find the tapping pulse. So the, the uh, apical beat can be counted from the angle of Louis. and the intercostal spaces. So the apex beat is in the fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular line. It is not tapping or heaving in character, and it is normal in good volume. Um, now I will be looking for parasternal heave. There is no parasternal heave in my patient. No palpable thrill. No palpable thrill at the precordium of my patient. Moving on to the most important examination, which is the auscultation of the precordium. Uh, we do the auscultation with the diaphragm, end of the stethoscope, and the bell for the murmurs. And we have four areas, areas for auscultation, which is the mitral, the tricuspid, the pulmonary area, and the aortic area. So the mitral and the aortic areas are listened to uh, in expiration and the pulmonary and the tricuspid are listened to in inspiration. So I'll be instructing my patient as I go along. So Dr. Kamran, if you could please take a deep breath in and then exhale and then hold your breath. And hold it there. Thank you very much. Now you can take a deep breath and please inhale and then hold your breath. And 
keep on holding it. Thank you very much. You can exhale. Now take another deep breath in and exhale and hold it there for the aortic. Exhale and thank you very much. Thank you very much. So the heart sounds are normal in my patient. There are no additional heart sounds or murmurs that I can find. Uh, for murmurs, I will be uh, auscultating with the bell side, ideally. I will ask the patient for any murmurs or radiation. There are two places of radiation, so you check the axilla and you check the uh, aortic murmurs going into the neck. So um, for that, I'd like you to please take a move to the left for radiation in the axilla. Thank you very much. There were no uh, radiation of murmurs in the axilla, and I'll be auscultating on your neck now. No murmurs in the neck are heard. Um, the best way to listen to aortic and pulmonary murmurs are basically having the patient sit up and bend forward. So if I could please have you sit up. Thank you very much. And bend forward a little, and exhale, and stop it. And now inhale and hold your breath. And hold your breath. Thank you very much. There are no murmurs, uh, so uh, nothing abnormal was heard on auscultation. Meanwhile, as the patient is sitting, uh, you should also check for signs of uh, heart failure, which is uh, uh, bibasal crackles in the lungs for pulmonary edema. So if you could please uh, take some deep breaths for me. In and out. And again. And once more, and again, thank you very much. There are no crackles or signs of heart failure in my patient. Also, you should check for edema on the dependent areas. One of them is the sacral uh, area, so you press hard on the lower spine and then see if there's pitting edema. Thank you very much. There is no pitting edema at the sacral area. You can lie down now. The last thing uh, where you see the, pe uh, the edema is... Um, at the shins, just above the medial malleolus, press a little for three seconds with your thumbs and leave it and check for pitting edema. Thank you very much. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you. Um, I hope you enjoyed and benefited from the videos. Thank you very much.